you know, we were excited enough about the, the rare earth recovery rate uh, that we've demonstrated of greater than 92%. But our technical team has taken the process way beyond that now. And they've actually increased the recovery of niobium uh, uh, you know, by a, a couple of diff a couple of percentage points. And that means uh, additional niobium for sale uh, to our customers. Uh, and also because of the of what Scott and his team have done with the technology associated with that higher recovery, we're going to be able to produce multiple products uh, in the in the niobium uh, 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 sector. So we won't just be stuck with ferroniobium, which is a very good product and it's a very liquid product, uh, but but it is one of the lower premium products. We'll be able to to make niobium pentoxide as well, and and potentially look at other even more high purity um, uh, niobium products as well. This is going to help NioCorp be positioned to utilize its niobium for the, the the new applications that we're seeing out there. And in particular, the one that catches our attention is the niobium lithium ion solid state battery. Uh, that's something that you know the largest. Uh, niobium producer in the world has developed uh, with Toshiba, so CBMM and Toshiba, and they're starting to commercialize that. We are in discussions uh, with some, some folks that have uh, some intellectual property along these lines as well. And we're pretty excited uh, to, to be able to say to the potential customer now that you know, we have a higher purity niobium that, that comes off of the process flow diagram. It, it, it does two things for us. As I mentioned before, it allows us to sell into some, some different product categories. Uh, and it also allows us to make the ferro niobium much more efficiently and in all likelihood with a lot smaller equipment than what we originally had. So again, just you know, plus, plus, plus in terms of, of what the new metallurgy uh, is providing for us. And, and I know it's taken a long time to get there. And I always tell Scott, you know, this is this is one of those areas in, in in the technical side where, you know, quality is way more important than how fast we do it. And so we are getting quality uh, you know, results out of our metallurgy. It has taken a long time. Um, all we can do is say we're sorry, but it's so important to do this based on quality, not on timing. So we're we're just about done now with that demonstration plant and the, the full efforts to finalize the feasibility study, study associated with that are now underway. You know, we've done a ton of work on niobium in the demonstration plant. Uh, one of our objectives going in to that demonstration plant was to achieve a better separation in the processing plant between the niobium and the titanium. And, and, and overall, we want to, uh, you know, maximize the amount of, of yield that we get to the niobium product as well as to the titanium product. And it, it was not a, a particularly easy nut to crack. But I think just in, in the recent weeks at the demonstration plant, we've, we've now got a, a process process called chlorination that allows us to achieve a very good separation between niobium and titanium. And in particular, when you, when you think about what, what that means for niobium, number one, we get uh, at the demonstration plant level a higher uh, niobium recovery to product. So that's always good. You're, you're making more niobium product from, from each ton of ore than you would have using the previous production process. Uh, number two, we're able to now make niobium, uh, again, at the demonstration plant level in a number of different forms. So we can make niobium oxide, well, which is a saleable product in and of itself. Uh, we will remain, uh, we will keep our capability to make ferroniobium, which is uh, you know, commercially traded product and, and a product that we have a, a considerable amount of octane for. And, and we can produce niobium chloride as well. So, so we've got now some, some optionality in terms of, of what we make for a niobium product. And I think that's, that's very important for our business going forward. Because what I see happening in the marketplace is a, a demand for niobium oxide, um, as that material can be turned into niobium metal, which has a, a number of very important applications, including in, in super alloys. And I, I see uh, other applications in terms of the, this, this new demand uh, in solid state uh, lithium ion batteries that, that use niobium uh, in the formulation of those batteries. So uh, we expect that to be a, a very rapidly growing uh, sector of the niobium market, 
And um, as we take this these results from the demonstration plant through uh, to you know the next technical report and ultimately to an operating plant, we put ourselves in a very good position to produce a, a range of niobium products, and and we'll certainly uh, have de-risked the project uh, from that perspective. Thank you.